So down here it says copy values in transactions and then there's an option to control the number of rows. So I'm going to show you both. I'm going to uncheck that and click on save and close. So we're going to do copy down values in transactions without asking me the number of rows. So we can see the exact dynamic of that. And it's typically most valuable like in a journal entry or a bill. So for example, if I go build a journal entry and I'm just going to pick a couple of accounts here in random. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course, I'm picking the trickiest of all the accounts, right? Accounts receivable, <laughs> accounts payable. But let's just say we have a, a, a journal entry and we have a whole bunch of uh, accounts. It doesn't matter how many accounts we have in there. It could be, we've tested this with like 500 and it works super quickly, super smoothly. So I have a journal entry with all the accounts. And this is something that you always have to manually choose the accounts that you want. But one thing that's a pain in the butt is, let's say this journal entry is supposed to have the same class the same name or the same location throughout. It takes forever for you to come in here, uh, copy the customer, come in here, copy the location, come in here, copy the class, okay, and then go in here and then do it again. Again, this is a this will probably take you close to 45 seconds to a minute just to do a 10 line journal entry. So we have this triangle here, which is the copy down feature. So when you click on the triangle, you have to click on that first, then it tells you, okay, now tell me which cell you wanna copy down. Okay, and note that it'll copy down based on which cells have an account associated with it. So they have to have an account associated with it. It uses the account as a reference number to know how far down it needs to go. So then I want to click on this customer job name, just the one name on the top, click on it once. And then it says, hey, are you sure you want to update all the names starting from line one? And then I'm going to hit OK. And it's essentially what this does is it will automatically add for you. Uh, that name throughout. Let's do the same thing with location. Click on that. Click on location. Okay. Let's do the same thing. Click one more time. Click on class. Click okay. And you're welcome for giving you the greatest gift of all, the gift of time. You can stand up. You can clap. Standing ovations are um, are uh, are required at this point. But you can do the same thing with a, with a memo too. So let's say we can do, let's say, memo and I just type a bunch of stuff and then I come up here click again the triangle click on the memo boom and it does it I don't know if it does it do it with amounts I mean that would be it, it does would be a, which was slightly trickier than everything else but it's, okay interesting so I could do it with amounts too I'm not sure exactly on under what circumstance that will work but I could totally see a world where maybe you're splitting across 10 classes you know a a, a tenth of the dollar value and then you would do something like this for the dollar amount, okay? Something like that. I really don't know, but totally something you could you could do as well, okay? And again, what's it, this is going to be useful also in a bill? And and somehow um, uh, Mark made it work. I think in all functional transactions or so invoices, yeah, uh, bills, yeah, and everything. So same thing here. Uh, does it work with in the item section too, Mark? Or is yes, it just a, I that was actually the thing that took me the longest on this whole thing was okay. the fact that uh, I had to figure out a way to make it so it worked even in expenses and bills because of the fact they have that weird double, uh, you know, category versus item details thing. Yep. So that was the part of it that actually took the long. Right. So let's do an example <laughs> of that. So, so let's say, for example, I want to sell uh, 17 of these across the board. Again, I'm not sure under what scenario we would do that, but let's say 17. I come back here to the triangle, come down, click on the 17. Then click on OK. OK, 17 gets copied throughout. That's a beautiful thing. I come select my customer job, select my, my class, then go to the triangle, do customer job, OK. Triangle, do class, OK. I mean, honestly, we've done a lot of features in Right Tool. I think we crossed the 100 feature mark. I could probably tell you this is probably my favorite, and it might be my favorite for a very long time uh, because this particular thing is just so emblematic of stuff that will save you time. And stuff that QuickBooks should have. And if I want to predict the future, if QuickBooks into it were to copy right tool, like cop copy us and yeah, it's a play on words, it's called copy down. If they were to grab a feature that we have and immediately add it to QBO based on like just the sheer impact that this could have, it would probably be this one. Uh, and, and it would be a huge compliment if they do, by the way. So because this is this is something that should be built in. So click on save and just quickly, oh, I'm going to pick the vendor name. Uh, click on save and just quickly, um, you know, create that that bill. Whether you're using expenses or items, it could do that. Now, I'll, I'll ask an open question uh, because I've ha we had some feedback on this copy down. Uh, people, um, 
people have asked if they can do something different than copy down, not just copy all the same account down. People have thought about, is there a way it can automatically populate every class uh, just one by one? So just go through the entire class list and do one by one. Or can they populate every location? It would be very tricky to do every customer because that would be a humongous list or very tricky to do every account because that would be a, hum a humongous list. Um, but like, is there a scenario where maybe we can replicate the pattern? So you have this four classes hit a button and they just keep copying the next four. So I would love to know your feedback in terms of like where or how copy down could be enhanced or be taken uh, to the next uh, to the next level here. So that's copy down. But well, we do have that, one additional subsetting for that, by the oh, way. Oh, that's right. That's right. Thank you for reminding me of that. So let's go over that. Uh, yes, yeah, so this came uh, directly from user feedback. It's called control number of rows. So I'm going to um, save that. And uh, Mark, do you have this specific um, use case in, in terms of why they wanted that? Uh, I don't know, but I know it was asked for by multiple people. So I mean, I was like, I'm not going to question it. Um, okay. with, right, so the way I have it set up is actually a twofold way that it's set up. Um, you can use it kind of just the way that the normal copy down is, and we can actually just see what happens when you do the copy down. Uh, yeah. So, so, let, so let's do this. I, I have a, I have a 30 line journal entry and let's say that for whatever reason, the first 10 lines get a class, the second 10 lines get a second class, and the, the last 10 lines get another class. I guess that would be a, a, a particular use case. So I'm going to pick a class up here, click on copy down, then click on it, and then it's asking me, how many lines would you like to go down? So in this case, I'm going to put 30. Oh, no, no, sorry. I would do 10, hit OK, and it would just copy 10 of them. And then I would go to the next line and then do the next class, click on the triangle, click on this one and then put 10 and then hit OK and then go to the next one. Let's say this is some other class here, uh, that one, click on the triangle, click on that and then hit 10. I think that, that was probably the use case on why people wanted to do that. Now, one thing uh, you would to put notice, nine, but <laughs> yeah, well, one thing to notice is I'm putting 10, but it should have really been nine because I, I have to think that the first one it's included in there. And uh, another uh, interesting use case to this is I'm I'm going to create a let me create a new a new journal entry um, a, a totally blank journal entry is sometimes you want to start copying down without the actual account being present first so you want to force how many you want to have in there so for example let's say I want to have uh, three classes I want to do five five and five before we even start entering accounts. So this would be a good scenario where I would go in there, let's say, let's say locations. So I would go in there, choose the first location, click on this, and then copy this four times, click OK. Then go to the next uh, location, click on this, then do four times, hit OK. And then we go to the next one, uh, whoops, hold on, next one, location, click on that, and then four and hit OK. Because prior to being able to force the number of rows in there. So prior to that, um, it was based on how many accounts were used. Uh, so, it, so the lines didn't have an account, it, it wouldn't go any farther than that. So by telling it the number of rows, you actually force it to go, uh, to go beyond that. 